This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you go to the 3D Experience Student Community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge-up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Go to Student Community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And welcome back to the Open Alliance Show of Week 6. Here we go. We got Jacob and Victoria from Team 342 burning mag needles welcome onto the show uh jacob i know we had you on a few weeks ago victoria welcome for your first time or uh, i'm told uh that your uh, other name is vicky t so uh i don't know which one you prefer <laughs> to go by but uh if you don't mind can you just uh, remind us uh what you uh do on your team and then we got a whole bunch of cool stuff to talk about your robot driver assistant functions auto modes uh and a uh, robot uh overview so far as well too Hello, everybody. I'm Jacob. I'm the team captain, and I, as well as a programmer. Hi, my name is Victoria, also known as Vicky T, apparently. Uh, I am a junior, but I am one of the more senior programmers on uh, 342. Awesome. And, and Victoria, I'm very excited to talk talk more about your uh, automotes as well uh, coming up in a little bit. So we'll we'll get to that. But first, uh, Jacob, I think we're going to be jumping into some of your uh, driver assistance uh, functions that you have on your robot. So talk to us more about that. And then, of course, at the end, uh, we got the big robot in front. We'll be showcasing more about that. So with this year's game, when it was shown to us, we realized that we had a lot of experience with stuff like it. And so that kind of gave us the that gave us as a programming team the freedom to try out some of the more quirky things that we can use to help out our drivers. So one of the things we have right here is we have this LED, we have an LED array and we have, we have an LED array right here. And then we have another one mounted on this panel right here. And so what this is for this, what this is supposed to do is our drive team can actually manually trigger this light to be either yellow or purple. And so that's so that's so, and that's how our human player can also see the, that's how our human player can see what, type of game piece we want as we're coming across the field for when they're at the double substation. And we also have a pretty traditional driver camera mounted on this panel over here that is, it runs photon vision and it, we don't use any of the vision processing on it. It's really just so our drivers can kind of see what they're looking at because the robot, obviously they're going to be turned away from the, the driver station a lot. And then a lot of our driver assistance functions actually come from the limelight this year. And that's something we've been, that's something we've gotten more comfortable. That's something we've gotten more com back up. That's something we've gotten a little bit more comfortable with as, as the season goes on. So a couple things that it's going to be able to do is when it, when it locks onto a target, it's going to be able to rotate. So it's centered and aligned and that's going to help with scoring and then when we have our when we have our gripper done, which we don't because of 3D printer issues currently, it will once it picks up a, a game piece, it will be able to know what it has because of a color via a color sensor, and it will actually change the vision pipeline. So when they're trying to auto align with the targets, it's going to try and auto align with the right type of target for what they have. And we also are doing a form of current monitoring on our. Um, on our gripper this year that way when they're trying to pick up a cube it will know and it won't pop the cube by trying to spin the rollers too far or too fast and because we want to minimize pop cubes on the field and now i'm going to hand it over to victoria to do, talk about our autonomous parts yeah so this season we definitely were very excited about uh the addition of april tags for the um for the field this year and so in terms of autonomous we are it's very linked with um the vision a lot of it that jacob talked about and so our plans are for in terms of autonomous it should be able to pick up an april tag know where it is and be able to use an auto balance um autonomous so that it can get those points at the beginning. Um, 
what else? Well, Victoria, let me ask you with the uh, with your auto balancing on there. Uh, have you done any sort of testing for that yet, or has it just been all right now in the build stage for that? We have we have tested that out. Yes. So when you were looking at uh, uh, actually doing it, what maybe advice would you give for uh, other teams who are looking at doing auto balancing as well? Because we've honestly have only seen a couple teams do it pretty successfully so far. So I know a lot of teams are very much so looking forward to how they can try to do it too. Uh, I would say don't overcomplicate it. Uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of very complicated designs out there, but ours simply just uses values obtained from our gyro and can use the is it the yaw or the pitch it can use the pitch and tell where it is and sort of adjust from there i know i've seen like kind of pids floating around but so it's kind of like an improvised version of that sure. in a way <laughs> uh and then something yeah. to, to ask you as well too with uh, uh looking at your autonomous modes uh can you can you kind of detail through like uh any other maybe types of modes you're going with that might not involve auto balancing? Like if you already have an alliance partner that can do that and then uh, mm -hmm. anything uh, that might be like maybe automated during a match too, potentially. So yes, definitely. Um, I know that we have plans to be able to make, make it so that we can leave our community and possibly with the help of vision to pick up a game piece. If I'm, if I'm correct, Jacob, and score yeah definitely to score in the uh in the hybrid node so at the beginning so if we can't or it's not convenient for us to auto balance then we can do that too <laughs> very cool so so how much um so we've talked about um a lot of your driver assist and some of your software stuff how is your intake working and your arm working? And you've got a lot of fun, fun stuff on your robot. How, how is all that stuff coming together? So our, our intake is currently in progress. We have it right here, but we're going to have, we're going to have some Andy Mark, com, we're going to have some compliant wheels on it that are just going to be for the purpose of drawing in cubes and cones. It's going to be primarily belt driven using this Neo 550 right here. So that's kind of how we plan to, you, that's kind of how we plan to make the gripper work. As for the arm, it's as for the arm. We talked about this previously during our our last time on the show where we were really going over design, but it really it is that six bar linkage, and it's driven by it's driven by two uh, standard size neos, and it really and it uses limit switches to know whether it's fully up or down. And we have a 25 pound gas shock right here, and that's to help us keep it up during the match, so we're not having to put the motors at through quite as much having to stall them to keep the robot to keep the arm up like we have had to do in previous seasons i think we had to do it in deep space and so that's and then that's really how the robot is kind of designed to designed to play the game well and to make things easier on both the drive team and the software side so Jake, Jacob, I just want to uh, follow up on that. So you, you said with the gas shock that your arm stays up. So during like your, your cycles, are you keeping your arm up the entire time as you're running back and forth on the field? So that is definitely not, that is definitely not the intent to, to have, because what we've, what we've learned is this robot actually has a little bit of back, you know, back heaviness to it. And so if we were to keep the arm up, it would definitely tip over. We've actually over the past couple of meetings been adding some ballast to the front just to prevent that tippiness. Justin's got a prize to show us. All right. Yeah, I feel like there's a <laughs> thing coming in. <laughs> yeah. These are stainless steel uh, cutoff pucks from uh, just off the assembly line from one of our sponsors. It's just cutoffs that they weren't using anymore. They were going to scrap it. And, uh, Right now we have stuff zip tied on the front of it, but this is our final plan. We're going to bolt some of these stainless steel pieces into the belly pan. I feel like this is going to be the year of ballast. I've seen so <laughs> many teams coming up with more like weight solutions where like this is, I think it, I think it has to do with the uh, kind of one dimensional aspect of this game where there's not a mechanism required for end game. So where there's normally 20 or 30 pounds of like, hanger or other thing on there you might end up with a uh, just 
hey, I've built this scoring mechanism. It's really light and the whole robot's really light. I know that many teams are investigating uh, steel belly pans and, you know, uh, replacement steel members. So it's pretty, pretty fun to see. Uh, Jacob or Victoria, have, had either one of you had a chance to watch like any of the week zero events that might have taken place this past weekend at all? So I actually did spend a lot of our past Saturday meeting watching some of the week zero events. And it was really kind of, it was really very interesting to see a lot of the ways that the teams were kind of trying to optimize their cycles. And they were definitely going over the charge station seemed to be something that is going to be important for op for getting your cycle time to be quick. So that's that's definitely that's part of the reason we're trying to put weight on it as well. So it's more about and it, to make it more balanced so we can also make use of that when we're trying to cycle quickly on the field. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is like when you're looking at that, how did you apply it? So I'm, I'm glad you went right into that. Is there anything else on your robot from an overview standpoint uh, or functionality that you guys want to show off? I don't think. we. Nope. So then looking. Yeah, go ahead. It's nothing super fancy, so there's not really a ton else to go over. Well, so looking at your first event is at uh, uh, PCH uh, Anderson, and that's at week two. Uh, so I know you talked about getting the claw on and having some 3D printer uh, issues with that. What else are kind of your next steps and, you know, honestly, just a couple of weeks before your first event to really get things rolling for your team? So we actually have this coming Saturday, we have a shakedown event here in the room. There's going to be four other teams and they're going to come out and we're just going to run robot tests, see how cycles work out. And then that and then the week afterwards, which we have a dedicated scrimmage where we're going to move some of our field elements to a different space and the other teams are going to come with some of theirs and we're just going to run full matches all day. And our drive team is going to get a lot of practice with that. And we're also going to be able to figure out some of the things that are not super optimal about the robot that we're going to we might try and work on between Anderson and Hartsville, which is our second event. Sure. And I got to ask Victoria, too. Yeah, we're from a programming side. Are you looking at doing? Oh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, tuning that needs to be done. I know that uh, this arm, it, we are planning to use a PID loop for it to be able to move to a set position so that we can give our drivers an easier time with placing the, the game pieces. And so that's going to require a lot of time spent adjusting and fine tuning that um i know there's some work to be done in terms of the arms functionality just in general it's 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 a project and the gripper is definitely going to add even more to that when we finally get it put on there what what's your plan from a control mode standpoint are you going to have a button box where it's like going to go to prepositions or are you going to have you know manual control of the arm like, I know that you've got a bunch of work you need to do there, but what's kind of your your plan on how the operator or driver is going to gonna tell that arm where to go during the event? Um, it's going to be a mixture of D-pad control and some buttons with also a chooser at the beginning to get us started so that depending on what our alliance is planning on doing. Well, 342 uh, Burning Magnetos, uh, wish you the best of luck the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for coming on. It's great to see your team again. It's awesome to see your progress as well, too. And we can't wait to see uh, what's coming up. Uh, I'm going to leave you with the, the last word here. Any last things uh, from this game, impressions? Are you still excited going into it? And uh, how nervous are you going into an event in just two weeks? It is definitely something that we're all anticipating. We're excited and anxious, but we're ready. Well, we wish you best of luck. I know you will be ready, so we can't wait to see uh, that progress and can't wait to watch you at your uh, first event. Thanks a lot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you go to the 3D Experience student community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Go to Student Community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23.
Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash premiere23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.